Hey everyone, welcome to introduction to inking with a Hunt 102 Crow Quill. Alright, so this is what we've got. This is a Hunt 102 Crow Quill. Um, this is just a brown little plastic holder. You've got the Crow Quill nib that sits inside of the hole. And then I just put one of those little, um, like, sort of finger rest things. So when you buy your nibs, they come in two different packaging options. There's a box of a dozen. And these are called Speedball Hunt Artist Pens. The number is 102. Or you can get them in the Twin Pack. Okay, so what's interesting about the Twin Pack is I've actually found these to be better quality nibs than what's in the box. I have absolutely no idea why that is. But these are almost always killer. You can get a box and get, like, a decent amount of duds. Like, they'll be a little too dull. Or they'll, they'll be what I call a paper shredder. So... If you if you have a nib that's a paper shredder, this is what you can do. This is what I found is one fix for it. I've tried to sand them with very fine sandpaper. It doesn't work. But what you can do is you can just, like, I, I put some ink here so you could see my little inkwell thing. So it's just a little glass salt dish, like a little small cup about the size of, like, one of those, like, NyQuil cups. Um, and I keep ink in it. So you can take a nib that's very, very sharp and kind of tears your paper and just put ink on it a couple of times and then put it away. I mean, you don't have to leave it where it's like covered in ink or anything like that, but for whatever reason, there's a chemical reaction that takes place when, when ink goes on the metal and it sits on it for a while. And like I said, I wouldn't put a bunch of gunky ink onto it and put it away, but you just want to like let it get used to having ink on it a few times. And you know, if you have a scratch piece of paper, you can go and sort of like let it rip the, you know, the the living daylights out of it. Um, and then, you know, wipe it off and put it away and just keep a little container full of these nibs. When you come back to them sometimes a month or two later, they actually are great nibs. So that's that's a little hack for a bad nib. Bonus, bonus uh, info. So anyway, when you have a Hunt 102, how you ink with it is, I'm gonna show you, this is a side view of the nib. Hopefully it's focusing on this. Is it having trouble? Come on. Okay, so do you see one end is flatter, and then there's the curved double, the curved uh, like section underneath? Okay, the flat end you want to have kind of facing towards you. Okay, I I tend to throw my lines away from me. I know that some people pull them towards themselves. Whatever you're more comfortable with is fine. Okay, there's no right or wrong for that. I'm totally 100% a self-taught artist. Um, you know, I have no art background at all. I just was someone that liked to draw. So, okay, so I dip my, my nib into the thing. So if you keep even pressure on a Hunt 102 Croquel, you will get a very, very even line, almost like you're using a Micron or a Rapidograph or technical pen. I'll even show you a little cross hatch. Like I said, there's, there's still, I'm getting used to sitting with my head so far away from the paper. I generally work really, really close to the board. Um, you know, like, like my face is like right on it. So, um, yeah, it's a little weird sitting like completely upright and trying to like ink lines. I get, I get down into it. Um, so anyway, but yeah, so if, as long as you keep even pressure, you will get a very, very even line on your nib. Now, again, if you watch my introduction to brush inking video, the one thing I talk about is if your ink is too thick, it will not come off the nib. Don't immediately feel like the nib is bad. I, I call the, the metal thing a nib. Um, uh, that's not always the case. Sometimes your ink is just a little too thick and it's just not coming off the, the, the thing. So that's what, that's something that you can check. Now, when I start to bear down on this and I'm pushing, and again, flat end is towards me. This little curve, curvy end is away from me. When I start pu you know, pushing down, now all of a sudden I've got a thicker line. So what's, what's really cool is a nib to me is just a very, very stiff brush. Okay. You can go from thin to thick to thin again, depending on how much pressure you put down. Light to thick, light to thick, light to thick, light to thick, you know? And what, in comics, what we do is usually series of lines that kind of do this, like, like thin to thick. So, you know, you might be um, indicating like some anatomy. You'll go through, and you can you can sometimes 
go through and do like another little line. There's a few ways to do the like that kind of scissoring effect, um, but uh, we'll get into that stuff later. But um, now, one thing that's going on right now that you can't probably see so much in the video is Hunt 102, those thicker lines are very, very wet. If I run my finger through any of this stuff right now, it'll smear. I mean, it's it's wet, wet ink. So you have to be very, very mindful of where the wet ink is. And, you know, if you're right-handed, you're probably going to kind of want to work from left to right. And if you're left-handed, you're probably going to want to kind of focus this way and move that way. Um, and, you know, occasionally you kind of have to step away from the paper and, and let it dry for a bit. But... Anyway, so, again, I'm just pushing down a tiny bit harder to get that variety of line. And trying to avoid all the wet stuff. Now, when the the risk that I'm running right now, this is very kind of like, I wouldn't normally do this on, on um, a, like a published piece, is because I'm dragging a second set of lines through that really wet ink, with this DC paper, there's a very, very high likelihood that it will shred, that the paper will crumble under the the wetness of the ink, the poor quality of the paper, and um, it can be problematic. So generally what you want to do is if you're going to do some sort of like a hatch, um, a lot of times you have to kind of let the first set of lines dry. So anyway, we'll say that that... And, and, um, not that this is a hatching video, but if, if you start pulling them closer together, you'll start to get a, like a, a blurring effect. So anyway, we'll just kind of, it doesn't really have to be neat. Um, but I just am pulling the lines. But what's happening right now is, so because this ink is wet, it's getting more and more paper on the tip of my nib, which is going to give me a gunky line, like like the thinnest line I could probably get on this. Oh, it's the paper kind of came off. But yeah, what was happening is I could feel it actually pulling up paper and it's it's it was accumulating on the tip. So what I'm doing is I'm always taking a rag and I'm I'm wiping off the tip. I don't generally put this in water. If my ink is a little too thick and I'm trying to do maybe like some super slick lines, I will dip it in water. But again, kind of like the mentality of the brush, you only really want to put the nib into the water, like from the tip, just maybe like right about there. You don't need to go in here. You don't want to get a bunch of water going up inside of this. It doesn't go real far back. It, like like this thing just sits in a, in a hollow, um, like hollow opening to right about here. So, but you just don't want wetness, and, and that's why I mean you'll see my fingers are always dirty. Half the time I can't get the ink even off my hands with like crazy gnarly soap. And see, here you go. Do you see? Look at the tip of the, the nib. Do you see that little bulb at the bottom? That's paper. Let me see if you can see it. You see the paper on it? It's because this paper is tearing up from the wetness of the ink and then the low quality of the the Bristol board. So. Um, I will do videos with better paper as we move along. Again, these are all kind of like introduction videos, and it's me getting used to the process of filming myself. Let's see, I mean, it's still, I mean, we're getting some fun effects. I mean, they've... They're not the like slickest, most kick-ass like Hunt 102 things, but um, anyway, but that that's kind of a basic idea of how you use the nib. And again, you can create little exercises for yourself where, you know, just little hatches. I mean, they're they're kind of fun to do. Um, you can try to draw like little circles or. You know, whatever you want to do, just to get familiar with it. It's probably my number one tool that I use, honestly. Um, I used to... Well, it depends on the job, but I would say, yeah, Hunt 102 is my number one really a shame that this paper isn't better. So hopefully that's kind of a fun, at least, like, little look and introduction into what a Hunt 102 will do. Um, 
what I'll do for our next demo is I'll actually get some some samples of pencils and then I can kind of show you how it can blip and blop. What I'm doing here is I'm pushing down. There's essentially what a hunt nib looks like is it's two two hold on, let me see sorry where that circle is if you if you follow that circle up to the tip of the thing it's actually split apart so it actually has this so the harder I push down the nib is opening and that's how the ink starts to bead here and it's moving down and that's how it creates the thicker line and the less you press this little gap sh is shut like its natural state is that it's almost nearly closed so that's when you get your thinnest line okay the harder I press it's splitting the ink starts to bead here and it's moving down it's pretty amazing like little little tool um but uh yeah so so I don't want to put my hand in this um but yeah so like like one thing that that comic book inkers do is we, we I call it blip and blop but it's like you press down and you can get like little circles of wet ink and these are very very wet super duper wet um but yeah i mean that's how you'll see like you know when guys guys or girls will put um you know the the interesting sort of like contours on things is we're doing stuff like this it keeps like a bounce to the 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 work and i double my lines quite a bit so you'll see sometimes like a real thin line next to a thick one um and my stuff, I tend to go a little angular. It's just something that I like. Um, so a lot of times my lines will have a little bit more of an edge uh, as opposed to like smoother, rounder sort of things. But anyway, you can see like it gets a pretty nice variety of things. So you've got a brush, you've got, you know, a tech pen, and then this other thing, the blip and blopper. All right. I hope that was fun to check out and, uh, Hit the like button and um, yeah, stay tuned. I'm going to be doing more of these. Introduction to Hunt 102, basically what it's capable of and and uh, what the unit is. And here, just let me show you this really quick because I didn't show you a nib out of the holder. So this is what the little metal nibs look like. Here you go, you can see that. It's got a hole through the middle where the ink goes up into it and. Um, they're about a dollar a piece. They're not cheap. And again, sometimes you'll buy a box of these 12 and maybe eight of them are really good and four of them are kind of not so usable. It's a shame, but it does happen that way. But yeah, get a little ink on it, let it set overnight or maybe even for a week or two and uh, come back to it. And that nib may actually may work well for you then. And, uh, you know, again, this is just a little plastic holder. They're real cheap. You can get fancier ones. I'll show you. Like, I have a longer one right here. Um, it has a different nib in it. Let me see if I can find it. I'm going to pause this. Here we go. Sorry, I had packed it up for a con. Um, but yeah, so this is this is the the big one that I have, and I actually have a different type of pen nib in this. Um, that's an old like um, calligraphy pen. Um, it's an Esterbrook um, uh, nib, and nib meaning the the metal thing in it. Um, and then this is just a Koinor. It looks like it says 127N holder. Um, this won't hold a 102, but it'll hold the bigger nibs. So it's it's some pen nibs are, are more specific, but you can see the size difference of these two, in terms of just like like even the length of it. Um, but you you should probably go for something that's a little thicker, so that your hands aren't constantly like like squeezed into like a like like a little small death grip. And if you ever find yourself really holding a pen tightly, you have to kind of consciously just tell yourself, hey, like like ease up. Um, I used to find that I would do that more with a brush than a Hunt 102. I think because with the Hunt 102, uh, we'll use this pen for a second and see how it is. Um, but uh, wh what it is is I think like when you use, when you're nib inking, you, there's more stop and go. And with a brush, maybe a lot of times you're sort of doing more, um, um, 
if more precise work, you know, if you're doing like a head of hair, it's a lot of lines kind of all at once that are trying to um, go a certain way. But anyway, this pen really wants to tear the paper. It's super duper sharp, and uh, this paper wants to just die. This is really some of the worst paper that I've used from DC in a while. It's kind of shocking. I, I, I had been suspect of it, um, but this new batch is, is yeah, you can actually see it's tearing. Let me see if I can autofocus on that. Yeah, it's actually bleeding. No bueno. All right. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this was interesting. All right, bye.